Gemara. Okay, Bez Hashem, tonight's Gemara is Daft Tzadik Gimel, and we're beginning on, on Daft Tzadik Bez, Omid Bez, about like eight, uh, te, uh, 12 lines from the bottom, Om Rab Yanai. Uh, just to recap, well, we learned yesterday that um, a, Rav said a statement that what? A woman that's supposed to fall to Yibam, right? She's waiting on to get Yibam or Chalitza. She's called a Shemeris Yavam. And therefore, what would happen if somebody else would make Kedushin on her, give her a ring to, to try to marry her? So um, if they have, a, if she would sleep with somebody before getting the Yibam or Chalitza, according to the Chachamim, the offspring is not a mamzer. That's for sure not a mamzer because it's not an isakaris to do something like that. The Torah gives you a prohibition that the woman cannot marry somebody else prior to receiving her yibam or chalitza. But it's just a lav. So, so normally, uh, when there's just an isr lav, kedushin does take effect. For example, by a, a, a divorcee marrying a kohen, the Torah only gives you a lav, but if you do kedushin, kedushin does take effect. So rav came up or a Chiddush, that this would be by the Shemaris Yovam marrying somebody before getting the Yibam, there the Kedushim would not be Typhus because the Pasik says, let's go on the top, Loisia. It wouldn't work. A Kedushim wouldn't happen if Aishis Hamait Sachutza, if the wife of the dead person marries somebody who's not the Yabam, uh, Lishzar, somebody who's not the Yabam. So it doesn't work. And, and therefore, what would what what the the consequence for that is what that if she does marry somebody quote unquote she can walk out without a get because the marriage took did not take effect. Shmuel says she does need a get. That was the that was the topic. Amar Rabbiani Rabbiani said bechabura nimru v'gamru they got a group of rabbis together and they counted them up and they all came to the conclusion ain't kedushin tovsim be yavama that a kedushin would not take effect if the yavama married somebody before getting the Yibam HaChalitza. Amalei Rabbi Yochanan, so Rabbi Yochanan said to Rabbi Yanai, wait a second, Rabbi, it's not a, we don't even need a group of rabbis. It's a, it's a open Mishnah in Mesechtas, Abba and Kedushim, that it's, that it could work, that, that Kedushim would not take effect. Why? The Tanan, look at this Mishnah. A man says to a woman, he's a guy. Okay, he's a guy. A guy who's a guy goes over to a Jewish woman and says, You are going to be my wife after I get a geiris. So he gives her the ring prior to going through the geiris uh, process. As a guy, the Mishnah is going to say, now he can't betroth her now, but he wants to do it now, and it'll take effect as soon as he comes out of the mikvah uh, and, and, be done, and be done with his geiris. So he says, I want you to be Mikdashus to me after I become a ger. La'acha tishis gairi. Or after he go, um, a Jewish man goes over to a Goyish uh, lady and says, after you become a ger, I'm giving you the Kedushin now, but it should take effect after you become a ger. La'acha she'eshtachrer. Or an Evet says to a, a, a Jewish woman, after I become free, I'm giving you Kedushin now. It should take effect after I become free. Right now, I'm not free yet. Or the opposite case. A Yisrael goes over to a Goyesha Shifcha, a Goyesha maid, and says, after you become free, when you become Jewish, the, the Kedushin should take effect. But I'm giving you the Kedushin money right now. Or, this is, this is the case that can be very familiar. A man goes over to a married woman, and he says to you, here's Kedushin, here's a ring. And this Kedushin should take effect after your husband, current husband dies, Automatically, as the second he dies and you become free, you now married. You're now betrothed to me. So th- technically, right now he can't do it. He can't marry her because she's a married woman. So, but he wants the 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 uh, it'll take effect on a later date. Or a man who's married to a sister and says to his wife's sister, "When my wife, your sister, dies." That's when I want to marry you. And therefore, I'm giving you Kedushin at this moment. Or here's the case, and here's the question. A man goes over to a Yishemar Yavim, and he says to her, uh, he says to her that I want to give you Kedushin after you get your Chalitza. In all these scenarios, because you cannot do it right now, 
ain't no Mekudoshis, she's not Mekudoshis. So one of the cases is La'acha she'yachalaitz yavamech. The reason why it's not Kedushin, because we see from here that a woman who's waiting on a Chalitza is somebody you can't give Kedushin to. So it's an open Mishnah with the same idea of Ein Kedushin Toysim B'Yavama, that a Kedushin would not take effect by a Yavama. So that's what Rabbi Yechonin said, that it's an open Mishnah. It's not something that, that, um, um, that you need to have a whole group of rabbis to decide. Now, I want to point out to you, a man could go over to a woman, any woman that he wants to marry, and say, listen, I'm giving you Kedushin now. I want the Kedushin to happen in 30 days. That could work, because technically he can give her the Kedushin now, but he can stipulate that I want it to happen in 30 days. Here, a step needs to happen. Either the guy becomes a ger, or the, let's say, or the guy, uh, or the woman's husband has to die, or she has to get a chalitza. Therefore, since he cannot technically do it now, he cannot make it take effect later on. So there seems to be a raya that Kedushin is not toifes by Yavama. Amale, so Rabbiani said, very nice proof, but he loved the delight, la chaspa mi mishkachas marganusa to say, had I not pick it, picked up for you the broken piece of pottery, would you have found the pearl? In other words, it, it seems that, you know, I laid it up to you to think this way, that that is the pshat of the Mishnah. But really, it's not the pshat of the Mishnah. Really, um, Kedushin, you, there's another way to learn pshat in the Mishnah, that Kedushin would work for Yavama, or Shemeris Yavam. It would work. And the reason why it doesn't, it doesn't take effect is because it's his makna dover shalai bal oilam. Means he's trying to, acquire something that doesn't exist because at the end of the day she needs to have something be done to her uh, a chalitza so and after the chalitza she's like a new person or so so to speak so therefore it's not the same person that you're you're trying to betroth and that's why it's not doesn't work because it's davar shaloi bal oyam that is the subject of tonight uh, of can I acquire something that didn't come into existence yet? Can I sell something that did not come into existence yet? And we'll discuss it more later on. Amalei Rishlakish. Rishlakish has another uh, inter- uh, proof. He, he refutes this Mishnah as it's not being a proof. Why? He, he said to Rabbi Yechonin, Ilav de Kalsa Gavar Rabach, if, if your Rebbe didn't praise you, Rabbi Yana, he didn't give you such a compliment, Rabbi Yechanan, I would have answered this mission is not even a riot at anything. Because Masnis and this mission is Rabbi Akiva. This mission goes according to Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, everybody agrees Rabbi Akiva holds, Kedushin does not work uh, by, a, by a Shemeris Yavim. Because Rabbi Akiva holds, any time the Torah gives you a prohibition, the kid is a mamzer. Uh, so even a grusha, you know, in all cases, a lot of cases that the Torah says don't marry, let's say, a, 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 um, let's say the Torah says don't marry an Amoini a, a or something like that, a laugh, the kid will be a mamzer, according to Rabbi Akiva. So therefore, whenever the kid's a mamzer, there's no Kedushin works. Our discussion is a de Chachamen. So that Mishnah must be going according to uh, Rabbi Akiva. That could be according to Chachamen, Kedushin would work by, 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 by Yavama. So the Gemara says, the Gemara says, uh, asks against Rish Lakish and says, no, because if you said that this Mishnah goes according to Rabbi Akiva, and that's the reason why Kedushin doesn't work because Kedushin would not work by Yishmeris Yavam, but according to Rabbi Akiva, he has a novel thing. Even if it doesn't work right now, even if it's not here in the world, Rabbi Kiyu holds that a person could be makna davish Let's see what the Gemara says. The Rabbi Kiva says the Gemara asks back on Rish Lakish, When a person says, I want to give uh, uh, that the Kedushin should take effect after you get Chalitza from your Yavama, Litva say, Bei Kedushin, Kedushin should work. Why? Don lay Rabbi Kiva. We have an opinion, Rabbi Kiva, the Amar who said, Adam makne This is the subject that a person could sell or acquire something that does not exist into this world. So even according to Rabbi Kiva, why wouldn't this be, be a valid kedushin? True, you can't marry this Shemar Yavam right now, but Rabbi Kiva holds you can make a king in right now to even for something that's not existent in this world at all. 
The Tman, we learned in the Mishnah. And where do you see Rabbi Akiva's opinion? We go to Tzaddik, Gimel Amad Aleph. Rabbi Akiva, here's an example of something that doesn't exist in this world. A woman's handiwork, a woman's wages, let's say she has a job, the wages belong to the husband. That's called my siyadayim. But if she works overtime, let's say, and she goes above and beyond, she can keep it. So listen to this case. A woman says to her husband, she hates her husband, says, Koinim, I consider it like hegdish, like holy holiness, and therefore, shani whatever I'm going to do for your mouth, you can't benefit from it. So this is basically saying anything that I work with my hands, everything that I, I work with uh, my body uh, and produce uh, a wage, you can't benefit from it. It's also to you. So the Mishnah says, the husband doesn't need to nullify such a promise because the woman had no right to do it in the first place because she is obligated to give over her wages to her husband. That's part of the ksuba. But Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says, Yafer, you should nullify that promise. Why? Shema ta'adif olav yoiseh min hara'ula. Maybe she's going to work extra hard and she's going to work overtime and that overtime doesn't belong to the husband. And therefore, and therefore that will take effect on the overtime piece that the husband is not allowed to benefit from. So he should nullify that nether. But wait, you see, but li listen to this case. So this is where it ends. Rabbi Kiva, at, this, at the point that she made the nether, she didn't work anything yet. And yet, according to Rabbi Kiva, the nether would take effect. The nether would be chal. So we see from here that Rabbi Kiva holds a person could uh, acquire and do kinyanim and, and make acquisitions, sell things, or put a, put a prohibition on, like a nether, on something that did not exist in this world. So if so, if you, so the back to there, that if you, according to Rosh Lakas, said that this Mishnah goes according to Rabbi Akiva, then the part that says Enim Kadeshus doesn't work because Rabbi Akiva holds, Adam would be able to makna, would be able to sell and acquire something that doesn't exist in this world. We're going to see a bunch of examples like that. So the Gemara says like this, no, this proof that you think Rabbi Akiva is of the opinion that Adam makna, davish it's not true. Because the case of the promise is he, she assert her hands. Let's say she's a computer typist or something like that. So she said, my hands, whatever comes out of my hands are usher for you. And the hands do exist in the world. It's not something that doesn't exist. She says, my, whatever comes out of my hand should be holy and you shouldn't be able to benefit. Well, her hands do exist in the world. So it's not that she's making a prohibition of something that does not exist. It actually does exist in the world. So it could be Rabbi Akiva holds, but here is the exception because the hands do exist. Who came up with the idea, uh, he argued on Rabbi Nachman Yitzchak because Rabbi Nachman by Yitzchak is, is going to say that Rabbi Akiva does hold Adam makne dava shloi bala oilam. He's going to hold against this, uh, the guy, the person that asked this question, he's going to hold that, no, that the, the whole uh, a whole point is dava, uh, that, uh, that Rabbi Kiva is the main source of the opinion that Adam makne dava shloi bala oilam. And here's the new Gemara. The Omer Rav Nachman Yitzchak, new Gemara. Rav, Rav Nachman Yitzchak said, Rav Huna Karav. Rav Huna held like his teacher Rav. Rav Kirabyani, Rav held like his teacher Rabyane. Rabyane held like his teacher Krabchia. Rabchia held like his teacher Karebi. Rabbi Abenu Kodesh held like his teacher Rab Meir. Rab Meir Krab Lezer Benyankov. Rab Lezer Benyankov held like his teacher Kirabi Akiva. The Omar and Rab Kiva is the source. The Omar Adam Makna Davash Loy Balaoilam. A person could make a Kenyan on something that doesn't exist in this world. So now, so the rest of the, 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 the daf is very simple. We're going to go through each Tana, and uh, each Amoira and, 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 and uh, Tana, who said this opinion, and find where do we find that they held of this opinion. Can a person acquire something that didn't exist in the world? Rav Huna Mahi. What's the, where do you see Rav Huna holds that position? The Itmar. Let's take a case. We was taught a teaching. A guy sells hamoicha peres dekel lachaveret. A person sells a palm tree 
to his friend in the winter. In the winter, there is no dates on this tree, but he sells, I'm selling you a, a forward contract. That means any fruit that's going to be produced from this tree, right? So then you can, that they belong to you, okay? A forward contract. So does it work? Uh, can it work? So Omar Abhuna, Rabbi Huna said, actually, as long as the tree did not produce fruit yet, you can back out of the contract because the, the, the Kenyan didn't take effect. There's no fruits on this tree. But as soon as fruits start being produced by this tree, the seller cannot retract. Why? Very simple. Because even though you made the Kenyan before the fruits came out of the tree, that works because Rabbi Huna holds the Kenyan can work even at a time when the when the, the thing that you're uh, bartering and selling did not exist in the world. It could still work. Rab Nachman Amar Rabbi Yachim says that this Kenyan never worked. Even after the fruits were produced, the seller can back out because the Kenyan was done at a time when there was no fruits in, in, given off by the street. And therefore, Rabbi Nachman holds, and Amar Rabbi Nachman, this is just a side point, Maidina, I would agree that it, before the seller backed out, the Shamet Va'achal, if the buyer still grabbed a few pieces off the tree and started eating it, we don't make him pay for it because the buyer should have, if he's going to retract, he should have retracted right away. But anyway, the point is, you see, from Ramhuna, who's saying that a person can write up a contract, even if there's no fruits on this tree, that it should take effect when fruits are produced by this tree. So Rav Huna is of the opinion, Rav, where do you see that Rav holds the same idea, that very nice case. Rav Huna said in his name of his teacher Rav, so Rav Huna and Rav of this are of the same opinion. A man says to his friend, okay, he's a nice guy, and he says to him, this piece of real estate, this field that I'm about to purchase, right? As soon as the, I, I purchase it, it's a gift to you from at that moment, from right now. It means I'm making the Kenyan that the Kenyan should, of a gift should happen right now. Although I didn't, I don't own the property that I'm buying. I'm buying it in another month or two. But when the I buy it in a month or two, the Kenyan that I did today should automatically make that field that I purchased belong to you, my friend. So kind of, it works. So there you see clearly that you can actually, you know, transact, make a transaction on something that you don't even own. That's a, a what do you call that in, in business? Vaporware or something like you don't even own, but you could call, you, you can make transactions on that, Bitcoin. Anyway, Rabianai, so that's another opinion, Rab. Rabiyane Kirabchia. Rabiyane also held like Rabchia. They both hold other Makna Davish Loibayalam. What's the story? The Rabiyane Havale Arisa, Rabiyane had a sharecropper, and a sharecropper means he takes care of the field and he has to bring you back, let's say, 30% of the produce to the owner. The owner of the field is Rabiyane, and he had a sharecropper working the field. And the production of the field, whatever it produced, he would bring to Rabyanai and Rabyanai as his payment. So let's say it was uh, a basket of fruit. The Habe Maisele Kansid the Perikol Mali Shabsa. Every Arab Shabbos, every Friday afternoon, the share couple would bring Rabyanai a basket of Paris. That's his his uh, his profits from the from the field as being the owner. Ahu Yaime Nagalevali also one time, one Arab Shabbos. The sharecropper was delayed and didn't come. Now, Rabbi Yana knew that the guy is going to come somewhere after sunset and bring in the fruits. But the problem is he won't be able to eat those fruits on Shabbos because he didn't take off Meiser on the, he didn't take off Truman and Meiser on that fruits. So he didn't get the fruits yet. So Shokel Isim Eperi the base alive. He took some fruits that he had in his house and says, these fruits should be Trumas and Meisers on those fruits that I'm going to get later on. So he, he, he actually took trumas and mysus on fruits he didn't even own yet because the, the sharecropper did not bring him the fruits yet. Also the comment of Rabkhia, so he came to Rabkhia, did I do correctly? 
Amalei Shape Avad, you did correctly, Rabbi Yanai. The Tanya, we learned in the Brisa, it says by Trumas and Meisers, Man Tilmat Yiras Hashem Kecha Kol Yamim. Give off Trumas and Meiser, and the Torah says, let it, let, you should learn to fear God all your days, that don't let Trumas and Meiser disturb your day. What does that mean? We darshan, Elu Shabbos Yantav. Don't let the fact that you didn't give off Trumas and Meiser disturb Shabbos and Yantav. What does that mean? Lamai Hilka. So, what is this teaching? What halacha is this price of teaching you? Elema is it teaching you this following case that if you have a basket of fruits on Shabbos and you didn't give off trumas and maisris, la asuri, the Torah is telling you a lot of give off maiser on Shabbos, umeicha, and you can eat it. Well, it's not even asumid the to give off trumas and maisris. It's only asumid the rabbanan of ticking keli. It could be muktza. So it's the Rakhral, the Mishri Tulti, the Rabbanan. Do I need this pasta to teach you that it's permitted to take off Maestris on Shabbos, uh, uh, on Shabbos from fruits that are in front of you? The, the whole Isser of taking off Trumas and Maestris is only an Isser of, of Tikkun, Tikkun Mana and also of Muktzah. So the Pasuk is not coming to teach you permissibility uh, on an Isser the Rabbanan. Ella, we go to Ahmed Bey's. Love kehai gamna. Amish is talking about a case where you don't even own the fruit. That's what the Bryce is teaching you. And therefore, you don't even own the fruit. And the Tchumish is teaching you that even if you don't own the fruit yet, if you're going to get it on Shabbos, you're permitted before Shabbos to take off Trumas and Mises prior. And then when you get it, you can eat it. Uh, uh, you can eat it on Shabbos. So we see that according to the Brisa and according to Rabchia, Understanding of the Brisa is that the, everybody holds you can make transactions on something you don't even own yet. Amale, so Rabhia uh, was telling Rabhia was telling uh, Rabyanai was telling Rabhia, right? Rabhiyanai, who's all nervous about this. Uh, so he and he went to Rabhia and he said, Okay, I did that. I had a dream, and the dream said, you're a bruised reed, a reed that, you know, a flexible reed. In other words, my love, so when you see a posik in your dream, maybe the dream is telling you something. So he thought, my love, this is what they're telling me in heaven. Are you going to rely, there's a posik in Malachim Beis that says this posik, are you going to rely on this cane of this flexible reed, which is not enough to support a human, you know, it bends. So what I, what he thought to himself, this Rabiana, he thought that if I see this thing in a dream, maybe the dream is telling me that I'm paskining wrong, that I should not paskin other makna davish loy bailer oilam. So the Rabbi answered him, "Loy, you're, you're you're misinterpreting your dream. Hachi ka'amri lach. This is what they're telling you in your dream. Kaner a flexible reed." La Yishbar will not break like like something flexible and it's soft and pliable. It it doesn't break like something that's hard. Upishtakeya and something that's a dimmed flax, la yichabana, you can't extinguish it as a wick. There's certain things that are unbreakable. And so that's the Pasik they were telling you that you, what you're saying is such an unbreakable position that all the makna davish loy bala Very often you'll find in the Gemara that they, they weren't sure of themselves, and then they had a dream, and the dream guided them if they paskin correctly or not. Another case, Rabbi, where do you see Rabbi is of the opinion of all the makna davish loy bala oilam? The time you learned in the brisa, loy saske ebed el adoinov. A person should not return a slave to his master. That means if a slave got free, don't make him work again. Rebbe Oymer, Rebbe says, That Pasuk is teaching you that if you buy a slave and on the condition to free him right away, right? So even prior, you made a deal with the slave. I'm going to buy you. And when I buy you, you're free. So he's actually transacting something that he doesn't even own yet. That's what the Tchomer says. Once you make that transaction, it takes effect. The Gemara says, hey, Chidami, what did Rebbe mean? The cost of law. He wrote a deal with this Evid. When I'm going to purchase you from your master, you have this star uh, freedom paper from me right now. I don't own you yet, but I'm trying to buy you. And when I buy you, I'm not changing my money, my mind. 
I'm giving you the star shikru that you can go free when the purchase takes place. So we see that Rebbe holds, you can make transactions on some things that you don't even own yet. Again, Rab Meir is also the, the opinion that you can transact things that you don't own yet. Now you're getting basically the idea of all these Tanoim and Amaroyim held that opinion uh, of, of, of basically this is the futures market. You don't own something and you can make transactions with it. The Tanoim we learned in the Mishnah, but Meir of the opinion. Uh, somebody says to a woman, All these cases, a man goes over to a woman and says, let's take just one, that when, after your husband dies, uh, the Kedushin should take effect. But I'm giving you the Kedushin right now. I'm giving you the ring right now so that when your husband dies, I, the Kedushin should take effect. So, or he says, after my wife dies, and gives his wife's sister a ring and says, after my wife dies, who's your sister? That, and I, and I can't marry you while she's alive, but after she dies, I'm permitted to marry you. So that, that should take effect then. Or after you get a chalitza from your vama. All these cases we saw before, but there is an opinion that says, the mayor holds that you couldn't make this transaction is valid. Even though right now, you couldn't make the Kedushin, it's called Dover Shloi Bala Oilam, that's non-existent. A married woman is somebody you can't you transact with and you can't marry, you can't give her a kedushin with, but you can make the transaction so that when the opportunity arises, it should take effect. So Rabbi Meir is of the opinion, Rabbi Leza Binyankov is of the opinion. The time we learned in the Brisa, yes, I'll came, Omar Rabbi Leza Binyankov. Rabbi Leza Binyankov said, um, furthermore, in other words, Rabbi Leza Binyankov always holds, he said, we know that truma has to be given on a fruit that's detached from the ground and has to be a third, you know, it's ripened a third of the way. It's so, somewhat edible. So what happens if a guy says, and the mama, a person says, Paris aruga zutlusion, all the fruits of this row that I have here that are detached from the ground should be truma. I'm giving them double truma and they should take truma on Alperis Aruga Mechubarim, on these fruits that are still growing on the ground. When the fruits that are growing are on, the, on the ground, connected to the ground, are not chayiv truma. And yet you want to give truma on that from the fruits that you already detached from the ground. Oi, the opposite case. Paris Aruga Mechubarim, you have a group of fruits that are connected to the ground, and they want them to be the truma on the truma on fruits that you're already detached from the ground. And all these things you said that when these fruits bring a further ripe and they're detached. So the, basically, basically you're saying that this truma should take effect. I'm saying it should be truma, but right now it can't be truma because it's connected to the ground. It didn't ripen a third. But when that event happens, it should become truma. But my my dibber, the statement that's coming out of my mouth is right now. And they actually did bring a third. They became third ripe. And they all got detached to the ground from the ground. But it does take effect. So, uh, uh, so it does take effect. And that's the that's so we see from here of Lezim Yaakov's also of the opinion of other Matna Dover Shaloi Bola Oilam. One more opinion and then we'll stop. Rabbi Kiva is also of the opinion that a person can tr- transact things that you don't own. The Tanan we learned in the Mishnah. A woman says to her husband, we saw this in the beginning of the daf, I I I answer any anything that I make with my hand, anything that I make should be also to your mouth, like, like touch him. You can't benefit from it. So the, the Tanakama holds a person, the husband does not have to nullify such a nether from his wife because she had no right to make that nether, right? Because she's, she, she is, she has the liability to give her wages to her husband. So, the, so there's no reason that the husband should nullify such a nether. Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says, you're fair. She should nullify the nether because Shema Tadif all of Yesim in her life. Maybe she's going to work extra hard over time and she's going to make more than what she normally makes. And that part of my Sidai and that part of her handiwork belongs to her. That doesn't belong to the husband. And, and that, the nether will be chal. 
So therefore, Akiva says you should nullify the, the nether. But wait a second. She didn't actually work yet. She's just saying that when I do work, the, that it should become usher to my husband. And yet Rabbi Akiva says that nether would take effect. And Rabbi Akiva is advising the husband to, to nullify such a nether. So we see from here that Rabbi Akiva holds that a person can tr transact on things that don't uh, have existence that didn't come into this world yet. So basically, that's what we learned today, that there are a bunch of Tanoim, Rav Huna, Amarayim, Rav Huna, Rav, Rav, Rav Huna, um, Rav, Rav, Rav Huna, Rav, Rav Yanai, Rav Bichia, Rav Meir, Rabbi, Rav Loza Ben Yankai, Rav uh, Kiva, they all hold that the whole futures market can exist because a person can transact things that don't, that did not become existent into the world yet. Okay. Very nice. Fascinating. Yeah.